All right, I'll be showing you how to use V8. V8 is a JavaScript engine that allows you to run JavaScript in your application uh, completely securely, completely isolated. And um, so I'll be showing you how to use that in Rust. The first thing that you want to do is pull in, well, the first thing that you want to do is create a uh, cargo application. And then you'll want to pull in rusty underscore V8. Uh, and I'll leave a crates.io link in the description and you'll want to get the la latest version of Rusty V8. And then after you do that, head over to main.rs and then we can use Rusty V8 as V8. So that just cuts down on some of the typing. We want to create a platform that our V8 code will run in. We do let platform equal to V8 new default platform and unwrap that to get the platform and now we want to pass the platform into v8 initialize platform v8 v8 initialize platform pass the platform in now that we've created the platform we can initialize v8 we do v8 v8 initialize now we have that, now that we have V8 initialized, we create a new scope. And I'll explain why we create this new scope later on. But just to uh, understand how V8 works, I'll show you how to create an isolate and then run code in the isolate. The isolate is the thing that isolates and securely runs your code. And it can be untrusted code meaning code that you, uh, could exploit your system. But if you run it in an isolate, then it can't. Let's just create some example code. Whoops. And in this code, let's say we have a multiplication of two numbers together and we want to print the result. Now we do re let result equal to, let's just say 20 times five. If we want to look at the result, let's say we just want to see the result in the terminal, right? Now, a lot of people might think we can just do console.log and the result. This doesn't work because console.log is a web API. It's not an ECMA script uh, thing. It's not part of JavaScript. It's a web API. If you look up web APIs, I'll, leave in a, I'll even leave a link in the description. You can see a list of them. They include things like service workers, just regular workers, subtle crypto, all that sort of stuff. So we need to create a function, a Rust function, that prints our result. So we want to pass a Rust function into this code somehow. And then with that Rust function, we pass in our result. And in our Rust function, so we have function print, something like that. We uh, print it, we do print line, and we take in the result, and we put that into the terminal so we can view it. But we have to somehow get the result, and I'll show you how to do that later on into the video. But the first thing that we need is to create the isolate. We do let mute isolate equal to v8 isolate new and just pass in the default uh, parameters. We now need to create a handle scope. A handle scope, the best explanation that I could find, and I might be wrong about this, but it contains all of the local scopes. And just think about what V8 is. It was created for Google Chrome, right? And in Chrome, you have a bunch of tabs. If you close one of the tabs, then you want to destroy all of the you know, the scope contained in that tab, right? And if you have a bunch of local scopes, it's hard, from what I've read, it's harder for the garbage collector to clear all that out. So we just have our handle scope and we clear the handle scope, or the garbage collector clears the handle scope and that uh, clears out all of the subsequent local scopes on that stack. We do let handle scope equal to mutable uh, v8 handle scope new and we pass in the isolate 
I'll leave the docs.rs link of Rusty V8 if you want to look at these functions and the description of this video. But after we create the handle scope, we now need to create a context from this handle scope. We do let context equal to V8 context and new and we pass in the handle scope. We can create a, or we need to create a scope from the context and the handle scope. And that's done with mute v8 context scope new handle scope and context. Whoops, forgot it equals. Now, this is a lot of setup, right? And so I'm going to make some videos on Dino, and there's a lot less setup in Dino to actually just run untrusted code and V8. And so maybe check out my channel, subscribe, if that's something that you would be interested in. But now we can create an object template. And an object template will, hand, will contain all of our function templates, and a function template is the thing that can actually call our Rust function from inside the JavaScript. And to do that, we do let object template equal to v8 object template new scope, pass in the scope, let's, uh, oh, oops, new. And from this, we can now set function templates in our object template. Now we first want to create a function template. So function template equals v8 function template new, whoops, keep on forgetting the w, and pass in the scope and the function that we want to be called back. So print, and print is down here, right? Now that we have the function template, we want to give our function, this print, a name. And we just want to call it print, right? But it could be anything. We do let name equals to v8, and the name will be a string, so string, new, and we pass in our scope, and the name of the function, so just print. And unwrap that, and now we need to set our function template inside our object template, which will then be given to the isolate. And we do that with object template dot set. And we need to convert the string into the key. So just we can do name dot into, and we also need to convert the function template. So function template dot into. We've now passed our function and given our function a name, which is print, and we've given that to the object template. We now need to create a context from our object template. And we do that by let context equal to v8 context new from template, right? And pass in the scope and the object template. Now from our context, we need to create a scope that will be used to uh, compile our script up here. From that, we do let scope equals to a mutable v8 context and new. And we need to pass in the scope and our, is that right? Context, oh, okay, no, we wanna create a context scope, my bad. Yeah, context scope. Uh, because if we just did context, you know, that would give us context. We need a context scope. And now from that, we can take our code and then create a source, which is a string. And then we pass that string into a V8 script and we compile that script and with that script, we can run that script to actually run 
the code. So we do let source equal to v8 string, because we're creating a new string, new, pass in the scope, the code, unwrap the string, and now we want to create a script. So let script equal to v8 script compile because we want to compile and get the actual so we can run the script and do scope and then source so it then see our string so just whoops or that is right string and then origin we just want none and unwrap that is that right whoops no we need to pass in sorry this should just be source my bad and now that we have our script, we can actually run that script, just like so. Now we've created the isolate and we've run, is that what's going on? Oh, we need to pass in scope, yeah, to the script to actually run it. We've created the isolate, uh, we've set all of that up, we've defined our function, right? And we run our code. But down here, we haven't finished doing our, uh, implementing our function, right? So we need to somehow pass in the parameters. Uh, now there's a, in the documentation, if you look, there's three parameters that the callback receives. You receive a handle scope, a arguments, let me just check the documentation. Oh yeah, okay, so a handle scope, a function callback arguments, and a return value. Now, in that order, we get our scope, which is a mutable v8 handle scope. Now we get our arguments, which is a v8 function callback arguments. And then we get our, a, we can get a mutable return value. And we use this to return any values that we want to be used in our JavaScript to receive it from our Rust function. And that's just v8 return value, like so. Now we want to get our result. And our result is contained in the function callback arguments. We do let result equal to args.get0, because we want to get the first argument. And we want to uh, convert that to a string. And that's a v8 string. And then we want to get that v8 string as just a normal Rust string. So we unwrap and then to uh, Rust string lossy. And let me just form that real quick. Format that. Okay, that's better. And we need to pass in the scope to, to Rust string lossy. And now all of that setup should be good. Now I'll explain why uh, I put this in its own scope. In a simple application like this, you can't really see why you would do something like this, but let's say your application is really complex, it's just huge, and you create the platform, right? Now when the isolate finishes and its memory is cleared, it will try to call the platform, a function in the platform. And if the platform doesn't exist, it will uh, crash your application. So if it's in its own scope that's cleared before the platform is cleared, then you know you're good. And after your V8 script is run, and after you want to shut everything down, you can dispose of V8 and then shut down your platform. You can do that, you have to call an unsafe function, so make sure you know that everything is cleared and you're able to do this. Do v8, v8, dispose. Now that we've disposed of v8, we can shut down our platform. So v8, v8, shut down platform. And I believe everything should be good from that. We can run the application, and I might have mistyped something or done something else, but I believe that we should print 100 in the terminal, right? So we this is our code, 20 times 5, that's 100, print 100. And we define our print function down here. We add it to our 
object template, we put the object template into a new context. We get the scope of that context. And then we get a source, which is a string of our code. And we pass the scope of our object template, which contains our function template, and the source into a V8 script. And then we run that script. So I believe that that should work. Now let me bring up my terminal and do cd document rust and is it learn v8 whoops and we do cargo run and we get a result of 100 and that is how you can call a and set up a v8 isolate and call a rust function Another thing that you might want to do is actually return a value, right? Now, let's say after you return your result and print the result into the terminal, you want to return a value to your JavaScript stuff. So you can do RV and then set. And let's say we want to pass an integer to the JavaScript code that we're running. You can do V8 integer and create a new integer and pass in the scope. And let's just say 50 is what we're passing in. And then do dot n2. And I believe this should pass, this should return mean this, this print function returns 50 as a result. And we can do that, we can check that by doing let returned result equal to print and then just print the returned result. And now this should return and print 50, hopefully. And that is the result that we get. And this is a intro to how to use V8, how to set up an isolate, how to run code, set up the platform, define an object, define a function that you want to be run, to be called in JavaScript, that is your Rust function. And so this should be good to get you going and coding and Rust and using V8. If you have any questions or if I made any mistakes, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to fix them and I'll try to correct that. Thank you.